Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play City of Zombies, a game for up to six players, designed for ages six and over. The game is suitable as a light family game, as it's fully cooperative. The players are working together as a group to defend a barricade against advancing zombies. The game is also being used in schools, and helps kids of all ages engage with each other and learn maths while having fun. Place the game board on the table. Then take all of the zombie cards and build the zombie deck. The difficulty level of each card is shown beneath the skull on the left side of the card. Decide how difficult you want the game to be. For your first game we suggest playing on the beginner level. So only use the cards with the number 1 on them. Place the rest back in the box. For advanced level add in the cards with the number 2. For expert level add the cards with the number 3. And for the master level also add the cards with the number 4. For this video I'm setting up a beginner game, so I'm only going to be using the cards with the number 1 on them. Give the deck a shuffle and place it next to the board. Then from the deck deal 6 cards face up into the city row. Place the rescue plane on position 15. If you want to play a shorter game you could start it on position 10 or even position 5. Take all the survivor cards and give them a shuffle. Then place the deck face down near the game board here. Deal the top 6 survivor cards face up into the safe zone area. The number on each card shows how many survivors that card represents. Take the game ending cards, shuffle them and place them to one side. The game also comes with hero cards and flip hero cards. These hero cards are optional and for this video I'm not going to use them, but they do provide a much more interesting and challenging game for older kids. The full rules for these can be found in the rulebook. And finally, decide who gets to go first. We suggest the player who does the best zombie impression, and give them the three battle dice. City of Zombies is played over a number of rounds. Each round has five steps. These are summarised on the reference card. In step one you'll resolve any event cards which have appeared from the zombie deck, which are cards with this symbol on them. In step two each player gets a chance to fight the zombies, rolling the dice and then using them to match the number on the zombie cards. Each player must use all of their dice, or they miss their turn, though with younger players you may want to relax this rule and just let people use as many dice as they can. I'll explain more about fighting zombies in the next chapter. In step 3, any zombies left on the board are moved down one row. If a zombie reaches the barricade, which is the purple row, you lose a number of survivors equal to the zombie's hunger, which is shown in the top left of the zombie card. The zombie then stays on the barricade, it doesn't move any more and you don't lose any other survivors, but if the barricade is ever filled with zombies you lose the game. In step 4 you move the rescue plane down one space. If it reaches the landing strip all players win the game. And finally in step 5 more zombies appear on the board, placed in the row next to the plane. With 1 to 3 players roll 2 dice and take the highest number. That's how many new zombies appear. In games with 4 or more players, always deal out 6 new zombie cards. And if the zombie deck ever runs out, just reshuffle the zombie graveyard to make a new deck to draw from. During step 2, when it's your turn, you roll the 3 battle dice. Your aim is to defeat as many zombies as you can, but remember, you must use all of your dice or you miss your turn. And also remember that this is a fully cooperative game, so other players are encouraged to help out and give suggestions, although it's always the player whose turn it is who makes the final decision. The number you need to defeat a zombie is shown in the bottom right of the zombie card. To get to that number you can either add, multiply, subtract or divide the numbers showing on the dice that you have rolled. So if I rolled a 2, 3 and a 5, I could simply add them all together to make 10 and defeat this zombie. Or I could multiply the 5 and the 2 to make the 10 needed to defeat this one, and then use the 3 to defeat this zombie also. Now if this was the only zombie on the board, I could still defeat it by adding the 5 and the 3 to make 8, and then subtracting the 2 to make 6. You can also power up your dice by multiplying the number on the die or a combination of dice by itself. So I could multiply this 3 by itself to make 9. You can also power down dice by taking the square root of a number. So I could add the 5 and the 4 to get 9, and then take the square root of that to get 3. Any zombies that you defeat are placed in the zombie graveyard, a discard pile next to the zombie deck. 
If at any point the board is cleared of zombies, you get to rescue more survivors and then more zombies appear. Draw four more cards from the survivor deck and place them in the safe zone. Then move the plane down one space and then deal six new zombie cards into the row next to the plane. I mentioned earlier that in step one you resolve any events which are showing on the board. Some events hinder you, like this one which moves all zombies down one row. Other events help you. This one allows each player to re-roll one of their dice this round. The other events are all explained in the rulebook. When playing at expert and master difficulty levels, items will also appear on the board. Items are taken from the board and placed near the players. They belong to the group and can be used by anyone at any time in the game. Full details of what each item does is covered in the rulebook. If the rescue plane lands on the runway, all players win. Add up the numbers showing on the survivor cards to get your final score. However, if the barricade is ever full of zombies, all players lose. When the game ends, whether you win or lose, one player draws a game ending card and reads it out to provide a closing story. Included in the game are extra components so that you can change the game to suit your group. With younger children, just use the beginner game, but with older groups, you can include the hero cards, each of which has a special move to help you fight the zombies. There are also flip hero cards, which start the game on the board and you must rescue them by using your battle dice before the zombies reach them, otherwise the hero turns into a powerful zombie and that's bad news for everyone. There are also alien bosses which abduct your survivors, prime number zombies which are especially difficult to defeat, and zombies that need negative numbers to fight them. So, in the box you will find many hours of gameplay, customizable for different abilities and age groups. If you have any questions about the game, please visit the website thinknoodlegames.com. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play City of Zombies. Take care, and thanks for watching.